And now a new venue, so we'll let Google Earth lead us in. On the Jersey Shore, south of New York, Manhattan, the Statue of Liberty, Asbury Park of Bruce Springsteen fame, we will find Seagirt, New Jersey, with a big brown patch that's the military training center for the police academy, the National Guard, etc. And there is the patch of green that draws us all like moths to a flame. It's the Green Gables Croquet Club. We're there in August of 2023 for the Mid-Atlantic Regional U.S. Rules Croquet Tournament. Loretta Cooper is the tournament director. The tournament manager is Ann Letty, who's also the club president. Our videographers are Paul Newbecker and Cecil Creasy when Paul is playing. And as always, we want to thank our sponsors, Chris Barley, the United States Croquet Association, where you can find everything you want to know about this wonderful sport, and Don Oakley's Croquet Store, supplying the equipment needs of beginners to world champions. This is a championship flight quarterfinal match featuring Dennis Letty, a local member who actually lives about two miles north in Spring Lake. He's a three-and-a-half handicap, playing blue and black. These two met in block play, and Dennis Letty prevailed 13 to 12 over Cecil Creasy, a four handicap from Richmond, Virginia, the Springs Croquet Club. And our videographer, when Paul Newbecker was playing, I could not resist pulling this off their website. Kate Middleton's sister's observations about croquet remind me that. Croquet was banned in Boston in the late 1890s because of gambling, drinking, and lascivious behavior. That's just the three-legged stool of a good time in Atlantic City, as far as I know. Hey, you didn't do that last time. <laughs> uh, so what do, do you dub in the... Does, does Russ dub in the... Yeah. Commentary. Yeah. yeah. It's so cool. Thank you for doing it. No problem. I love his voice. Yes. Thank it's you. just Soothing. sometimes I fall asleep to it. I mean, pickleball has a channel. I mean, come on. You ever watch the channel? Yeah, I do. Yeah. It went to the world. I don't love it, it but it's like, <laughs> it's good. Sometimes it's good. It's funny. Spring Mantis has been hanging out on the mic. Yeah, look at that. All afternoon. It's probably warm or something. If you're new to the channel, this is a standard U.S. Rules Deadness Board. The numbered column is clip position. We'll add points toward the end of the game. If you're watching from outside the U.S., the Deadness Board is just a tool to keep track of carryover deadness, which, of course, isn't used in AC croquet.
I'm not sure what everybody's official positions are, but we do have a picture of Dennis Letty mowing the grass, so he must be the greenskeeper. Cecil's mallet looks like the Acadia model by Don Oakley, our sponsor. Blue has a dolly rush to red on the boundary, so yellow can't really join up. Maybe a wide join or back to corner one. Or let's have some fun. Wow, that mallet is performing well. Two long row Ks in his first two turns. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yellow's dead on. Uh, Dropping black off for red. I think blue probably has a shot on black, but it's guarded by red on the west boundary. So he can wire himself from blue here safely, and blue's just going to have to corner or get out of bounds. And before you wire yellow, you better make sure blue can see something. Very funny. 
Somebody's got to pay attention. This is a perfectly sound tactical decision, but I guarantee you Matthew, Danny, Randy Cardo would have considered tapping blue and doing a stop shot croquet out to red on the east boundary, leaving black as blue's pioneer at two, and putting some real pressure on this hoop shot by yellow, because if black had done the croquet out and yellow bounces off, then blue has a four ball break. As my grandson would say, holy moly. So his goals are blue out of position, black accessible to red to make hoop three, and yellow either in front of four for red's break or in front of five to get clean. That seems a little long, but maybe he's trying to get wired from blue. And he's only got uh, opponent deadness, so not bad.
Quick glance at Hoop Forge tells him that yellow's pretty deep. Were yellow a better Hoop Four Pioneer, he'd probably run the break here, but instead he'll give it over to Blue. Yellow's only live on red, but he doesn't have to worry about wiring it with the peg or hoop four because he's not responsible for yellow. Yeah, that's, that's all ball. Black is dead on red. And he's not going back to the well again. It'll make him three ball dead if he hits red, and he can't do much with it because red is dead on black, so... Get out of Dodge. To climb it this time. See, so what's the matter? You just made that shot. You just made that shot like two minutes ago. <laughs> same ball, same position. I'm no help, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, what's okay, it's okay shot. That's a shot on He can make that. I've seen him do it. That's make well. That's for sure. Look at that. That's Pretty the way you though. do it. Money for nothing and your chicks for those, free. Ooh, interesting choice. He has a superb pass roll, but this is not the place to use it. This should be a drive shot to put his pioneer at four. Ugh. Not out. That's pretty far away. Curvy over there to play soft. Okay, blue is dead on. Just red. red. Is that right? Yep. Regression to the mean.
Remember that Black's Danger Ball Yellow is still in the middle of the south boundary, but it's dead on opponents. So this poses no risk. He has the best pass roll I've ever seen at this handicap level. Needs a little control, but it's impressive. Awesome distance control that puts nice real shot. pressure on blue. <laughs> Which is nice. Saving grace is that this is not an easy shot. So, to go wrong here. Who wanted to go start the wrong way? Yeah. Still, probably is going to be enough for Carl to pull it out either. Good with that. Very nice. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. It's the general only thing I do. Oh, Ooh. Almost. You tried. To do you a solid. Yeah. I'm just not that. I'm not that skilled. You're falling short. I'm not that skilled. Sorry, right. I think it's one back. We'll get clear anyways. Interesting. This is how you would do it in AC. Put black north to the hoop. Blast through the hoop. Pick up blue off the south boundary, and then send blue to six and pick up black on the way and have a four ball break. The American rules, <clears throat> since black is the danger ball, if he had put black south of the hoop, he could have rushed it toward the boundary, picked up blue and then left behind the danger ball and be able to run the break with the spent ball. We're thinking about it. Uh, 
Well, if you want to blue, now's the time to go get it. Looks like yellow's encroaching, so he can just put red in contact and make the hoop. He would love to find some way to to get yeah. yellow clean here, because yellow is dead on opponent, yeah. but better to take the gift and keep on going. We concur. Continue, Professor. Smart. He's going to make this hoop shot pretty hard. I'm not sure why, because it would have given him a pretty long shot on yellow after he made the hoop, had he hit yellow. Instead, it scooted off to the right. And Is he actually a professor? No book. He's cool. Oh, you got the crane mantle, sir. Yeah. I want to see. Well, they fly. They fly a little. Clearing blue. Too right. Last game, Claffy had a cicada on his back, but he wanted to pose oh, him. I don't like cicadas. Yeah, and if you remember, he he did this roll. That was off his partner, but I'm not. Yeah. So when he hit red. Oh, he, I think he hit red to, to get that started. That all the way through? Yes. It only has to clear the non-playing sign to be able to score the hoop on the next stroke. But you already knew that. In general, I try to make recommendations without looking ahead to see what's going to happen. But here, I have to admit, I know what's going to happen. And you have to wonder if he shouldn't have just cornered with blue. Because unless he was going to rush black all the way to hoop three... He's going to get three ball dead just to move yellow. And red is sitting there clean with a relatively easy shot on black. Uh, the predictive power of the retrospectoscope.
Nice. Uh, is this on the website? YouTube, yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Like, it, like, if I want to see a match of uh, Karen and I, what's on there? Are there uh, portions of it, or is it just all the championship? No. You took, you, I saw you take a lot of different matches. Yeah, if I film your match, it'll be up there, but it might be a couple months before it gets up there. Because wow. you did you did first flight, second flight, and championship? Yeah, I just take whoever's playing when I'm not playing. Ooh. Atlantic City's not far away. Dennis could have taken that gamble to the casino and made some money. We had a viewer a month or so ago ask, how do I gamble on this? I didn't actually know what to tell him. Uh, it's frustrating when takeoffs roquet the ball they're trying to get a rush on. Shooting that hoop? Why? That was my question. I have to go out of bounds on the ball.
because blue is three ball dead, yellow has what's called deadness rotation, but it only goes so far. If he sets up in front of five, which is black's hoop, then blue just goes to black, and black has a field day. If we were closer to the end of the game, he might think about just setting up with blue, tempting red to get dead, because red's for one back, and that could get blue clean fairly soon. But we're not that far along, and black is clean, so that's a better play. Another display of excellent distance control. That's the right shot, but that's not where he wanted blue. Take a look at this. Oh, make sure we don't hit for You okay with me watching? Sure. That's not a good idea. Uh, no, horrible. What are you, doing, you need a referee to watch oh, this. Loretta Cooper, your tournament director to the rescue. Make sure we don't take blue. He's dead on blue. Better not get my butt looking big in that picture, Paul. <laughs> I remember thinking about that. You know, there's a rap song you might like. <laughs> <laughs> you all know it. We do. I'm ashamed to not know it. No, it's not. Like... I don't even know it, but it sounded like it was a funny joke anyway. I just wonder <laughs> when, when Paul's son Arthur and my grandsons are bringing girls home, will they be wearing any clothes? But you need to go watch that ball. Uh, if he uh, hits the stanchion, it might move the ball. Thank you, Carl. Oh, he didn't shoot it. Did you hear Loretta call top first? No, that okay. That's clever. It's going to let Blue get out of the way, but 
it's leaving an opportunity for yellow to join up with red. Red? Two ball deck. Okay. Yellow. Yellow to play then, right? Yes, sir. It's a lot of hardware up there. Gosh. A croquet player could make this shot. Go get him. I can't call first double block or anything, can I? No. It's your turn. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure it's blocking. Well, so I think we're down to 1240. Cecil, 1240. Okay, all right. Are you shooting at that mess? No, he's dead on black and blue. That's it's going away in the right field, though. He does. The hoop is open. The hoop is open. I love it. Courtside commentary. I don't have to say anything. Here's a situation you don't see very often. Tried that one a couple times. We finally got one. It's a good time to be shooting. Forgot about it. <laughs> I'm losing it. Oh, we got a lot of dead things. He could peel yellow here and then destroy black, as they say. But if yellow sticks in the hoop, then black's getting a wiring lift to its own hoop. So that's a little risky. An ultra-competitive opponent would have every right to have a referee watch this shot in case he hits yellow or does a beveled edge in a hampered stroke. Dennis isn't even going to let us watch it. Looked clean, but there was a risk of a beveled edge there. Nine and a half minutes left, guys. Solid. How much? Nine and a half. <laughs> He's only down by three. He hits this. He's got a laid brick. Oh, man. I was wondering why you put red there. 
Well, I didn't think he was going to hit it. <laughs> but he did. <laughs> well, you knew you had to give him a shot or else it wouldn't be a wire. Right. No. So the possibility. This game's going to start. Hey, listen, I have bus for a memory. I try to do Are they done? Oops. Can call you on You call it. We can't go. I told you we can't go tonight. Yeah, we will, for sure. All right. Don't worry. Hopefully they won't just do anything for a while. Hopefully they won't hit anything. <laughs> That's the way the dice rolls. Oh no, yeah. you gotta go by the. She didn't tell anybody she could have switched it. She didn't tell what? But she didn't tell anybody. Maybe where rap came from.
Johnny Arsborn liked to point out that if you're ahead, you really don't have to attack, but there are exceptions to every rule. If he just gets off with yellow, blue, which is clean, could rotate black and use red as a hoop for a pioneer. This is also what you're supposed to do when you come through five and the opponent balls are gathered in the vicinity of one bag. It's better if you have a rush to those two balls, but however you get there, you row K1, get behind the other, which in this case is blue, rush it to hoop six, and get your break going. So if this works, red will be his two-back pioneer. Yeah, blue, black's right. Okay. I didn't see blue get through. Is it the hammer or the carpenter? Awesome distance control. That's a good mallet that Don Oakley makes. He's playing, but I think Cecil gets credit for these precision of these long shots. <laughs> to complete the set pattern that's available to you if you come through uh, five with your partner ball and the opponents are together down around one back would be to stop shot black to one yeah. back now and in the same shot getting a rush on blue to six that way you've got a one back pioneer and he already has a two back pioneer but there's not much time left he's got a lead and he just wants to protect it one minute What he's doing makes perfect sense, but my preference sometimes is to go ahead and hit the split shot. So I'm moving two balls, and it makes it less likely that I'm going to over hit the striker ball. Match time, solids. The shading behind the yellow ball indicates that it is first ball in last turn. If he stuffs this hoop or worse bounces off, then blue rotates yellow, has to get a rush on red to hoop four. It's not very likely, but it's certainly possible. And there's no real reason for him to give Dennis a chance to be a hero. Dennis won their block play game by one hoop, I think. Cecil wants to be sure he gets to even the score here. So yellow was first last. Yeah.
Black is, of course, last ball in last turns now. He's down by three. Two ball break for three hoops ties. One more wins it. So it's not to be. Cecil Creasy takes Dennis Laddy, evening the score and moving on to the semifinal against Paul Newbecker. Give us a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. There's more to come from Green Gables Croquet Club in Seagirt, New Jersey. Thanks as always to our sponsors, Chris Barley, the USCA, your source for all things croquet, and Don Oakley's Croquet Store, supplying the equipment needs of beginner to world champion. And now a little bit of the scenery. The camera was positioned so that all you could see were those houses across the street. But the place is actually pretty picturesque. As you can see here, they've got a bunch of structures under the trees. And they serve delicious food, it looks like to me. It's also a military training base, so the distraction of the helicopters is probably worth it if anybody ever has to be medevaced. I'll have to be sure they're available if I ever get to play here.